Zapier recently released a brand new trigger for the way it interacts with Airtable. We can now trigger an automation from a new or updated record. So if you're curious about learning exactly how this new trigger works, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner here at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you wanna learn more about how we do that, check out our website, I'll include links below. And don't miss our free Airtable crash course. It's gonna get you up to speed quickly and easily with Airtable. But without further ado, let's jump into the heart of this video. We are talking about the new Zapier trigger. And we're gonna start off just by looking at my screen here. I'm building a new Zap inside of Zapier. And you'll notice that when I go to my trigger event from Airtable, I have a new option. It used to be that we could only uh, trigger from a new record or a new record in a view. And this was somewhat limiting. In fact, very limiting if I'm being fully transparent because when a record entered a view, then it was only counted one time. And so if the record left the view and then came back in and you wanted to trigger that automation again, no luck. The trigger was not built to work that way. It was gonna only go one time per record every time it met the conditions that you established. But we now have a third and superior trigger in a lot of ways. This new trigger is called the new or updated record. So let's take it out for a spin and figure out what it does differently than the other triggers. So I'm gonna try this as my trigger event. And of course, in any time that you build an automation, you need to then you know, connect it to your account. Now, quick sidebar here, when Zapier pushed out this new trigger, they built a new connection. The way that Zapier connects to Airtable is new. So you might have an old legacy connection. As you see, I've got a couple of old ones here, but your, your uh, connection should have automatically updated as uh, ours did here. And so everything, all of our old Zaps just kind of got upgraded to that new connection. So that's the connection I want to use here. And I'm going to go ahead and continue. And then, of course, just as always, we have to pick our base. Now, I've built a brand new base here. It's called New Trigger dash Zapier. That's the base I want to use for this. So I'll paste that in here and find that base. And of course, I only have one table. So now we're going to get into the meat of the trigger itself, right? And you'll notice this little blue text box here it says you must have at least one last modified time field uh, or type of column in your table in order to use this trigger. So let's take a look at how we would set that up. You know, really quickly, let's go back into our base and let's say what we want to do is check any time the status has changed. So I can build a last mod time field. You can name this whatever you want. The name doesn't matter, but the field type is what matters here. I need a last modified time field. Now this field, if you haven't played with it before, can look at all editable fields, or it can only display one or more fields that you want it to watch. So in this case, I'm gonna say, look at the specific field status, and we're gonna create this field. Now, by default, none of these statuses were modified uh, yet, and so there is no time represented here. But if I were to put one of these at to do, then this pops in here. So this is getting timestamped with my current date and time. If I wait a few more minutes and make a change here, then that last modified time is gonna update. Now, side note here, you can't edit the data that lives in this last mod field. This is called a dependent field, meaning it depends on other fields in order to derive its value. So there's nothing you can do directly to change this other than impact the data that it's looking at. So the only way for you to change the last mod time here is to actually change, in this case, the status field. Okay, so we've got this rule set up. Let's go ahead and delete those backup fields or those backup records. And let's just look at this one. So I've got a status of to do, last mod time, and then you know we can do whatever we need to do in order to get this thing to operate. So we could have whatever other fields, if we're sending emails or texts or any of that stuff, right? What we're really looking at here is the trigger itself. So what timestamp field should we use to check for updates? Well, of course, we didn't have one built originally, so we better refresh these fields and bring in relevant data. And we're gonna choose this, and now we see that it's able to see the last mod field that we built. So again, this is gonna be named whatever you named yours, right? So whatever you name your last modified time field, that's what's gonna show up here. 
So I'm going to pick that one from the list. And, and this is kind of more advanced thing, you'll notice that you can also filter to update records from a specific view in your table. Just keep that in the back of your mind and we'll come back to this in just a few moments and look at more advanced case. So this then is going to trigger our automation whenever there is a change to this last modified time field. So just to test this out, let me add an email address uh, field inside of my database as well. And I'm just gonna like send myself an email here. So I'll put in my own email address. Now, if you have client data or something like that in your database, you could imagine that you have an automation that sends emails on a particular calendar or schedule based on that last mod field. So we have our new trigger. It's looking at our base. It's looking at this table and it's specifically watching our last modified time. And if we want to limit to a view, as I said, we'll come back to this. So let's go ahead and continue from here. And we're going to test our trigger. And this should go out and find that record that lives in our Airtable database. And of course it does. It finds that there's a status of to-do, there's an email address here, there's this uh, unique ID. And by the way, sidebar here, this unique ID that's being brought back is brand new. This is not data that Zapier used to get from Airtable. You'll notice that this is a concatenation or a string together of the record ID that is this first part here. And then there's a dash and then there's a timestamp for when the last modified time field said that it was last modified. So this is, uh, you know, if you, if you don't trust that, of course, you can look right here. Here's the record ID and here's the last mod time. And you can see that they are what is strung together here. So this is kind of the unique ID that is what's triggering this in the background. So now that we have that, we can build out whatever we need to do. So let's say we wanted to send an email address. We can do so by just selecting Gmail in this case. And again, the action is not so important here as far as what is triggering the automation. So you could imagine that you do whatever you want to here in, in your action steps. The important part here is that you've got this brand new trigger and this is going to trigger every time this last modified field changes for any record. So once I build and set up that automation, if I were to build another record here and set this one to in progress, well now you see that I have a new last modified time that matches our current time, this would trigger that record. If I change the status here to done, this would now trigger this one. And so now we would have triggered a total of three automations. And as I said before, this is a new feature because previously we could only trigger Zapier one time per automation per record. And now every time I change this status, that will in, in fact change the last modified time, which is then going to change or trigger the automation. So this is a really new feature and taking Zapier to the next level in terms of what it is making possible with the way it interacts with Airtable. Now, as I said, we want to come back to this idea that we can adjust or limit when this thing triggers. So let's suppose we wanted to send out an automation. We want our automation to trigger only when the status is done and the last modified time is current, right? So we can set up a rule for this by first building a view for done status. Inside of our done status view, we apply a filter that says we are only interested in seeing records where the status is done, right? Okay, now back in Zapier, we can say, not only do I want you to watch that last modified time field, but I only care about records that are also showing up in done status view. And this is where this gets really cool because now I can trigger this automation that will every time a new timestamp is showing up here on the last modified time and the status is done. So I'm almost using two different pieces like in tandem to get this really unique advanced result. And the reason that you would want to do this is let's say in your automation, for example, you wanted to send out an email every time the status was updated to done. You could do that. If you use the old trigger, it would only send one time. The, one, the first time the status gets set to done, it would send that email. Well, in this case, if you wanna send that email every single time, set it to done, cool. 
Now, if that is a mistake and it gets shifted back to in progress, you see it is removed from view, but when you then later come back and set it back to done, it's going to show up again in that database, therefore triggering the automation another time. So this is the really great advanced use case that we can do here with this new trigger. Let me know in the comments below how you're using this new trigger and what you think of the improved Zapier integration with Airtable. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly. And we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts, we have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.